Hi, I'm Alex McCrickard, and this is the Fisher Report for the month of July in Virginia. In this month's report, we're going to highlight tips and tricks for reading tidal water when targeting largemouth bass during the heat of summer in Virginia with our fisheries chief, Dr. Mike Bednarski. But first, let me take a moment to congratulate lucky angler Jeremy Fortner. Jeremy was recently awarded our first ever state record archery goldfish for this three pound, nine ounce specimen from a tidal tributary to the Potomac River. Congratulations, Jeremy, on an excellent state record catch. So Mike, we have a lot of anglers that obviously cherish and enjoy fishing for largemouth bass in Virginia. A lot of folks have experience on impoundments uh, or, or, or moving rivers, um, but a lot of people have never fished tidal water before. What, uh, what would you recommend when planning a trip on, on a tidal river for the first time? Well, when planning a trip on a tidal river, what I would do is look for an access site that gives you um, access to a lot of great habitats a uh, short distance, a few miles from the boat ramp, and then really concentrating on finding fish in those areas. And one of the biggest challenges, as you highlighted, is actually the tidal cycle. Yeah. Um, a lot of folks like to what they do call run the tides. Basically look around for an outgoing tide, which is generally considered the most favorable tide to fish in a tidal system. Um, I advocate for more of an approach of learning the tides, trying to follow through the tides in a different cycle on a specific area, um, because those fish will hold in a lot of areas through all the tides, and it's just a matter of being adaptable. You know, the trip we took recently, we started on a high tide, and when you get a high tide situation, particularly early in the morning, the fish will push far back, basically as shallow as they can get, and forage on all the different resources that are available there, and utilizing a lot of that cover that's up super shallow. Now well, there's a, a good way to start the morning today, out here in the Chickahominy River. So what we're doing back here is I'm throwing a big top water in these ditches and lanes in these creeks in the back. So this fish, you can see it behind me here. This fish came out of this setup back here. Um, on a high tide, the fish will push back into this stuff. Um, they'll get about as far back as you can float a boat. And um, as you can see here, um, we connected with a good one first thing in the morning, just running the tides out here on the Chickahominy River. Um, let me get this fish back in and let's see if we can't get us a bigger one today. And w when I'm fishing the uh, higher tide, fishing real shallow, fishing in those ditches and drains, I really like to throw a topwater. I think it does a good job of triggering fish and I like to throw a big topwater. Noisy, yeah. Very noisy. You know, we're fortunate on systems like the Chickahominy River. There's a, an abundance of six to 10 pound bass in the Chickahominy. And I think throwing a big bait is a really great way to maximize your chances of catching a really big fish. What do we have here? It's a better largemouth. Big topwater, outgoing tide. So Mike, as we get into the ebb tide or the start of that falling tide, you like to kind of start to focus a little further back off that weed line. Exactly. When we start to get about an hour, hour and a half past high tide and it's starting to go out, I like to start fishing a little bit off the bank, really kind of following a two to three foot deep contour as I go out. And during those stages, you'll see a lot of scattered vegetation, which is a really good opportunity to connect with some fish. Well, we got us another fish here at the Chickahominy. It's a little bit smaller, but we're now into mid-morning, partway through the outgoing tide. And you can see here with the outgoing tide, you pull a bit further away. So we're fishing this outside edge of these lily pads, away from that feeder creek that's leading in there. Um, when you get that outgoing tide, the fish will pull off a little bit, and that's what we're trying to capitalize on now. Fishing a heavy Texas rig in these lily pads. This fish isn't very big, but this is a big fish tactic. So we're gonna get back out there, see if we can't get us another good one. Um, and I'm gonna get this fish back in the water. And fishing during those type of situations, I like to throw a variety of different baits. I know we saw some fish on a glide bait and a Texas rig fishing that two to three foot contour. And again, that type of scattered cover can hold some really good fish and is worth hitting mid-tide. Oh, you got another fish out here on the Chickahominy River. We're getting into mid-morning, the uh, sunnier part of the day, outgoing tide. And what we're doing, if you see it here with the outgoing tide, fishing the edge of these pads, and you can see here it's all scattered. What I'm doing is I'm throwing this big glide bait. Well, this isn't a very big glide bait, but it's bigger than a lot of folks like to fish. Um, I'm throwing it out on the edges of this stuff, just bringing it back. And I watch this fish come up from under it, um, grab the bait. And then about 20 seconds later, we got another fish in the boat. Let's see if we can't put another one in the boat and let me get them back in the water. So Mike, as, as a, the tide continues to drop and you get closer to low tide, what are you really looking for uh, in, that, in that situation? Well, in a low tide situation, you know, the last hour and a half of the outgoing and even the first hour and a half of the incoming, I really like to look for vegetation that's matted up. 
you know, again, following that two to three foot contour and looking for those matted cover situations. Here we are at the Chickahominy River. We're starting to get to about dead low tide, uh, middle of the day, it's bright and sunny. Just got this fish here on a frog um, in some of these lily pads that are now matted up. You can see over here, fishing this type of stuff now at dead low tide, the fish are gonna hold up on the very edge of this stuff here. So when you've got a low tide situation, you wanna push far off. The edges of those pads are in about two feet of water. But as you can see here, they're holding some fish. In a lot of those situations, I really like to throw a plastic frog. It's a really great bait for that type of matted cover, and it's a great way to get some exciting topwater strikes, even in the middle of the day, as we found in the Chickahominy. Yeah, I was gonna say, even in bright sunshine, which is kind of counterintuitive to what a lot of people think, you can still trigger some of those fish to come up. And also, too, you know, you found success fishing permanent structure like docks, too, in that low tide scenario. Well, that's another good point, Alex. When you've got the outgoing tide, a lot of the vegetation can be in water that's really too shallow to hold fish. Yeah. But a lot of docks are constructed to permanently be in at least three or four feet of water. Right. And you can catch quite a bit of fish out of those fish in the pockets in the eddies. Here we are at the Chickahominy, another fish. Um, we're getting into uh, early afternoon now. Uh, tide's almost all the way out. Um, what we're doing now is we're fishing in one of the creeks, um, taking a look at a little bit deeper structure because there's not a lot of water. Fishing docks in three to five feet of water, throwing a stick worm at them. Um, this is not as big as some of the fish we saw this morning, but it's a bright sunny day. Um, it's a good fish for this time of the day. We'll take it, um, we'll get them back in, see if we can't catch more. And when you're fishing that type of hard cover, a uh, really great bait is a four inch stick worm on eight pound line, yep. which is light when you think about fishing a big bass system such as the Chickahominy, but it's a great way to put a couple of extra fish in the boat. And even fishing something like a jig and pig around pilings, yeah. you may not get a lot of bites, but you can get some good bites doing that. Yeah, flipping back into the shade where some of those fish might find refuge on a hot, hot summer day. Numbers wise, we probably caught seven or eight fish yeah. off of hard cover towards the bottom of the tide. Well, you did. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into this month's fishing report. Hopefully these tips and tricks can help you have success when fishing on a tidal river this summer. If you would like to have your catch featured in a future fishing report, email us at social at dwr.virginia.gov. And also, if a remote fishing experience is what you're interested in, consider checking out one of our wildlife management areas. The department has over 22,000 acres of land and lots of different wildlife management area opportunities that exist. Visit the link in the uh, caption below to plan your next adventure. We'll see you on the water.